minutes. I thank the chairman. Thanks for letting me come to the hearing today. Uh, you know, uh, I appreciate, too, Mr. Chairman, you and Mr. Pierce supporting my effort to delay this rule for one year, and I'll tell you why very, very succinctly. One, I don't think it helps us catch bad guys. Number two, we already have a rule in place that, uh, as Ms. Martinez, Ms. Martinez looked at, is very hard to comply with, and this is made more difficult. But the principal reason I object is due to Mr. Pierce and Mr. Lukemeyer's hard work. We're trying to rewrite AML BSA for the first time in a comprehensive way, and it seems to me to introduce a new complex beneficial ownership rule in the midst of trying to get it right statutorily is a distraction uh, to the banks in addition to uh, a costly distraction. So I would like to know, um, uh, Ms. Martinez, you support delaying this rule? Yes, I do, along with many other bankers. Yeah, and, and, and so I want to be clear, though, that I think secretaries of state should have best practices where they have an active email address, an active phone number, an active name for an agent for every incorporation in the country. Absolutely. And that it, they have some requirement in their state that there's a penalty associated with being inaccurate. I think that's good. That's not in our federal jurisdiction, but that's an important thing. And then I would like to argue again in front of this panel, as I have for two years now, that we do have accurate beneficial ownership information in this country at least once a year when we file the tax returns for every one of these pass-through entities. And I believe the burdens on the federal government and the executive branch to work with the legislative branch to see how best to use that data because it is accurate. They can change ownership during the course of the year, no doubt. But to have a simultaneous knowledge of every time someone changes ownership in a company in this country, that isn't going to happen. That's not possible. That is unreasonable. And so this idea that the IRS has passed through ownership down to uh, 0 percent, 25 basis points of a percent, not 25 percent, it's actually an actual reading, actual reading of the ownership in every pass-through entity of someone who's formed a company and files a tax return in the United States. And that would be a great uh, safe harbor source of information for our financial institutions. Next thing I would say is I'm not a big fan for this data, you know, another infinite database controlled by some unknown entity that people just ping into and find out what the beneficial ownership are. We have enough trouble with keeping people's private personal information safe in this country. The IRS has failed doing it, OPM's failed doing it, Equifax can't do it, Facebook can't do it. So to create another database that people can ping into from remote access on a PC or a bank data processing system, I think bears a lot of risk. So, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate uh, the work you're doing and that Mr. Pierce is doing. We need to design a beneficial ownership rule and customer disclosure capability that banks can easily comply with, provide the uh, federal government the information they need. But I argue passionately, the federal government has the information we're looking for. Let's find a legal, constitutional way for that information uh, to be shared inside uh, the federal government. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank the gentleman from Arkansas for yielding back. And I appreciate